Well, Ian, it's uh, it's one of those weeks, the retained list, quite an emotional week, saying uh, goodbye to people and offering contracts to others. Um, we'll start at the back, um, the goalkeeper situation. So Luke Steele and Luke Green <coughs> have left us, and that leaves us hopefully with uh, Sam Slocum and Tien and Brooks, who have both been offered contracts. How would you summarise the, the goalkeeper area of your squad? Yeah, I mean, basically like that. Obviously, Luke Pillin was, was number two pretty much the whole season, did a brilliant job, you know, great person to have around and in the, the dressing room and training pitch and was always ready um, which I think is a great asset to have as a number two Steely came in gave us some games and then you know shored us up behind the scenes in terms of the goalkeeping situation and uh, Sam obviously we've offered to Sam and, and Tiernan at the moment you know we're going to see them come back and, and perhaps Tiernan can be ready to, to step up closer to a number two role but that's something that we need to be open with I do think we need three goalkeepers around so will perhaps still be open for, for one more um, at some point because of the training and, and uh, but we're gonna that's one that we'll take a little bit of time with and and see what happens. But yeah, the 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 two that are staying on, you know, obviously Sam has been a uh, had a great season for us and finished really strongly. And Tiernan's a young goalkeeper with a lot of potential. You've offered contracts also to a number of the uh, other members of the squad. How important is it that that sort of sense of, uh, of unity and, and that continuation from what was a really good end to the season carries through to next season for you? Yeah, you know, when I came in, we, I knew that there was not that many players left under contract at the end of the season, but th that didn't mean that there was necessarily going to be a complete clear out. We, we had to look at what was in the building. And I said that quite a few times when we talked about bringing new players in straight away. I didn't want to rush to bring players in but I really wanted to see what qualities we had within the building and I think the players really developed over the time period that I had with them and the, the end part of the season I, th I think we showed our strength as a team and they really started to understand some of the, the tactical bits and the way I want them to play and then it's really important that we don't have a complete wholesale change of the entire squad and rebuild that process all over again that we've got some of the players that you know I felt really flourished and embraced it that can stay on and and uh, progress with the with the team and of course you always lose a few players which is sad and and some really good characters we lose as well but that's also part of a kind of a, a process in every club I guess. Two players that are under contract uh, as well for next season who haven't necessarily been as much on the radar recently Alex Lacey and Cal Roberts two very very good players uh, for this level and two players that you would probably suggest would suit your style of play really, really well. What are the what's the latest with both of those? Yeah, I mean, I actually had sat down with both of them this morning and had some good meetings with them and kind of talked through. Obviously, I couldn't give them too much feedback on areas that I want them to work on, other than other than please be fit. Um, but I know they're working really hard at that, and they're um, Cal's feeling good. He's had um, you know another little op to uh, to hopefully solve the problem, and he's feeling much better, and he's. He feels confident that you know he'll be back opening day of the, the pre-season, um, and be, he'll be ready to go again. And we, we're really hopeful that you know we'll we'll see the best of him in the pre-season and build him up again. Same with Lacey, really, two players that are very good football players, and and I think they have seen you know talking, especially we're talking with Cal, who normally says he doesn't like so much to sit in the stands and watch when he's not playing, but has actually enjoyed watching the team play recently and can really see where his role might be in that. And I think certainly from an attacking perspective, you know, he's really going to add something to the to the game. And obviously Lacey in the build-up phase is, is very, very good. So I think two players that I'm excited to get back into the squad and for me will be like new signings because I haven't actually really had them since I've come in. And um, so when they're fit, that's going to be great for the, for the squad. Mm. Um, obviously, Kyle Wooden, top scorer, he's he's contracted uh, for next season. Lewis Knight, Elijah Sam, Tyrese Palmer, three other attacking options. You know, what do, what do you want to see from them next season? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Tyrese is is a young lad that's um, you know going to come in and develop. And Lewis Knight is kind of a little bit in that bracket, although a little bit more experienced, but is still you know a little bit inexperienced at this level. You know, both of them need a bit of development time in the pre-season and opportunity to show what they can do, and and they're going to keep improving, and and you know we, we're going to see at what point they come in. Elisha's a little bit more experienced, came from abroad. You know, sometimes hasn't quite found the right role within the team, so that's also up to us to try and find the right position and role that he can kind of embrace, and and we'll use the pre-season for that. One man who we might be seeing a bit less of on the pitch is is Michael Doyle, who you've decided to offer. 
the uh, the assistant head coach role to on a permanent basis. What was it about Michael, you know, that you've worked with so far that, that convinced you that he was the man to take on what is a really important role, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, after Mo left, then I was uh, alone and uh, by myself in the office every day. And, uh, and of course, the rest of the staff that we had from Jake through to the, the medical team and Hutz and the guys, they, they all kind of rallied round and everybody did a bit extra so that, you know, we got the work done well. Uh, but at the same time, Doyle came in and really offered a good experience, calming head in the dressing room and and, uh, you know, I bounced a lot of ideas off of him. And, and it was really good to work with him because... I got him into the office to really understand deeper uh, what I was wanting the team to do. And, and I think that was almost like then I could put that coach on the pitch to help me. Now, obviously, he'll be less on the pitch next year because he's going to take a step back from that, be available if if we need him at some point. But, you know, his focus will be on the coaching side with me. And, of course, he wants to develop as a, as a coach. I think he enjoys the way that we play. And I think he wants to, to take his steps into the coaching field now. And I think because of his influence in the dressing room and, and you know his general experience as a, a footballer he can bring a lot to the to the coaching team should uh, Michael accept that role it leaves you with a big decision I guess to make on on your new captain for the, for the season yeah and we have some really good uh, people in the building I think we've got really good uh, we, I've said before the dressing room's been great great characters um, good mentalities in there so I think we have some good leadership um candidates in there that can kind of take that mantle so you know I'll look at that over the next few weeks and kind of decide who I think not only can embrace that but also it can maybe improve them as a person and and uh, somebody that can kind of take that leadership role for us. On to the players that have left us and there's only really one place to start with Enzio obviously he was our longest serving player last season and you know hugely popular figure with the supporters you know a lovely guy as well Ian what was your experience of working with Enzio? Yeah, exactly that. A lovely guy, just like really, really down to earth, hard working, brilliant attitude every day at training, um, gave his all for the team. Just an all round good guy, um, enjoyed working with him and, and a talented player as well. You know, obviously we, we go through a process now where we need to, to freshen things up, change and, and um, bring in some maybe new faces and new energy and, and Enzio was kind of part of the, the ones that are leaving but you know certainly around the dressing room and we'll be sad to see him leave because he was a great guy I think this, we've lost quite a few good characters in that yeah. group that have left haven't we I think you spoke quite highly yesterday of the conduct of, of all the players who, who left when you had your meetings with them yeah brilliant guys honestly do, you know even down to, to um, you know you talk, to, talk about players that haven't played so much uh, recently like Damo and Ben Turner uh, didn't feature so much in the last handful of games but were absolutely massive around the dressing room and so positive you know and and um, you know I was very very grateful for them because it's so easy when you're not in the team to to fall away and not train and not push the rest of the group and kind of be selfish but we didn't have a selfish player in the group they were committed and they worked hard and a credit to themselves so yeah you know it's like I said at the start it's sad sometimes to lose one or two players and certainly you, you lose good characters that are around but it is part of the process I think they know that and and hopefully they get set up and have a new adventure themselves mm. obviously we say goodbye to a number of lone players as, as well have you got any interest in in retaining any of those players yeah, yeah, we, you know, there, there is of course that uh, interest and that's something, you know, we first have to respect the clubs that they've been at and some of them return to parent clubs and, and um, you know, we leave those doors open and, and have some discussions over the next couple of weeks about those possibilities. But yeah, the, the, the one thing about, again, the loan players came in and they, they are not, if you like, Notts County players because they're owned by somebody else. But they all performed as if they were Notts County players and gave the rule for the club. And, and again, for that, I was very grateful. Brings us quite nicely on to recruitment. So mm. you, Richard Montague, the recruitment team have been preparing ever since you walked through the door for the weeks ahead, really. Um, so you're now in the next phase, I suppose. You've done your preparation, which I'm sure will carry on. But yeah. you're now in a position where you really are going to be going out trying to sign people. Yeah, we are. And uh, that process started straight away. You know, the minute we lost against Torquay, we started thinking, then we knew where we were at in terms of league. And then we kind of had an idea about what possibilities are out there. So we've been working hard on different eventualities. And, and now we've got to kind of execute it over the next few weeks and, and get the right players through the door to replace the ones that have gone um, and to hopefully 
build a really strong team to have a good go next season. But yeah, we've been, of course, working, uh, I say slowly, because you have to work slowly earlier when I, when I came in, because you have to wait until the season, you have to know what positions you need and amount of players that you need. Um, but of course, now it kind of vamps up and that's our only focus really. So I'm coming in on days now and just focusing on the recruitment process. Hmm. I think the big question on fans' lips will be when can we expect our first signing perhaps? <laughs> um, probably the same question on my lips. Uh, we're working on them and, and you know all of them take time. So I think hopefully over the next couple of weeks we'll be able to start nailing one or two down. And, and it will take a while. You know, Obviously we go into the pre-season and then there'll still be uh, players available and, and opportunities through the, the pre-season maybe even one or two trialists and, and things like that so you know I hope to get some of the core positions nailed down fairly soon and then after that you know we'll again go into the pre-season and maybe we'll see one or two areas that again we want to just strengthen Do you have an idea of a specific number of, of how many signings you want to make? Um, not not exactly but roughly maybe six players coming in would be good I think that would give us a good balance in terms of, of the squad one thing I did say when I came in was there was a little imbalance in terms of positions and you know we had a lot of right backs and not so many centre mids and sometimes that's a process of injuries and emergency loans and it's nice if we can just kind of balance out the numbers and, and make sure we've got cover in all areas so that we, we feel comfortable going into the season 